In this video, we're going to be talking about exponential growth and decay. So if we have some value y that changes at a rate proportional to the amount that it has present, uh, so basically what that is saying is the rate at which y changes with respect to time is equal to k times y, and the value is equal to uh, y naught when t is equal to zero, so this is just saying that this represents our initial amount, then this equation here represents the value at some time t where k is our proportional constant. So the proportional constant basically is just the rate at which we have growth or decay. So if k is positive, we experience exponential growth. If k is negative, we experience exponential decay. Um, now, when you're dealing with these problems, when uh, what signifies to you that this is an exponential growth or decay model that we're looking at is this phrase right here. So it says if y changes at a rate proportional to the amount present. So if you see this, it should be alarms going off in your head that we are dealing with exponential growth or decay. Um, and we can actually derive this equation straight from this differential equation. So I'm gonna actually show you that uh, so that if you ever get stuck, you could derive this equation from our uh, differential equation here. So if we start with the differential equation, dy dt equals k times y, we can use separation of variables so first thing we're going to do is divide both sides by y and multiply by dt. So we're going to have dy over y equals k times dt. And then we can integrate. Uh, that's going to give me natural log. So from this, I will get the natural log of the absolute value of y equals, this is going to be k times t plus some constant of integration. Now what we want to do is get y by itself. So we're going to raise, um, it's going to be exponentialized both sides. So e to the uh, power of each side respectively. In doing that, we're going to get y on the left and we're going to get this e to the kt plus c, e to the kt plus c. Now we know that this is the same as saying e to the kt times e to the c, right? Because of properties of exponents. And we can just generally call this value c, or our constant. Now in this case, we want the constant to be our initial value. So we're just gonna call this actually, right? We're gonna call this y naught. And in doing that, we get that equation there. y is equal to uh, y naught times e to the kt. And so you can see that this is just derived from this differential equation here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and try and apply this and use the exponential growth or decay model to try and solve some problems. Now, what kind of problems can we try and solve using exponential growth and decay? Well, there's a couple of different ways that we apply exponential growth and decay. One of them deals with radioactivity. This is the idea of like half-life. And then another one that's commonly used is compound interest. Uh, and this is continuously compound interest. Um, so when we're talking about half-life, we can say that the number of radioactive nuclei present at some time t is uh, represented by this equation. Now the equation is basically the same, except that here we have a negative k value, right? It's negative k. And this is what's telling us that we have a decay, uh, decay happening, because this is true when k is positive. So it might be a little uh, weird to you, like thinking that k is positive, but because there's the negative in here, we are signifying that there is decay happening. Now to calculate the half-life, we can basically just take um, the natural log of two divided by the value of k, the rate at which it is growing, and that's gonna give us, or decaying, and that's gonna give us our half-life. That's gonna give us the half-life, okay? All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. In this problem, it says, assume each situation exhibits exponential growth or decay. So we have a bacterial culture that starts with 500 bacteria. After three hours, there are 8,000. We want to know first, how many are there after four hours? Now, before we can figure out how many bacteria there are after four hours, we need to figure out the growth rate. Uh, so first, we're going to go ahead and plug in all the information we know into that equation. Um, so the final amount is 8,000 here. So that's going to be the value of y. Our initial amount is 500, so that's our y naught. 
and then it's e to the k times, and we know that it changes from 500 to 8,000 after three hours. So we can go ahead and divide both sides by 500. In doing that, we're gonna get 16 equals e to the 3k. Uh, now we need to try and get k by itself, so we're can, we can take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of 16 equals 3k, and then to get k, we can divide by three. So k is gonna equal the natural log of 16 divided by three. Now we're not quite done because this is just telling us the growth rate, the rate at which um, this is growing. So now what we have to do is take k, plug it back into the equation, and then also change the value of t to be four hours. We don't know what the value is gonna be, so this is gonna be y. So y is gonna equal 500 times e to this value of k times four this time. So let's go ahead and try and find that out. So y is equal to 500 times e to the k, which is natural log of 16 over three, all of this times four. And you can basically just take this and plug it into your calculator and you will get uh, that y equals uh, 20,158 bacteria after four hours. Now, it might not be an exact value, but we can't have partial bacteria. So you would round uh, down to the, or up, right? You would round to the nearest whole number of bacteria. Okay. Okay, so let's look at part two. In part two, we're asked to figure out uh, when will the population reach 30,000. So we're looking for the value of T here. This is my final amount, amount sorry. 30,000 is equal to our initial amount times E to the K value, which we had before, natural log of 16 over three. All of this times some value of time here. So we wanna try and solve for T. So go ahead and divide both sides by 500. So that's going to give us 60 is equal to e to the natural log of 16 over three, all of this times t. Uh, we can take the natural log of both sides to try and get the uh, t out of the exponent. So then we have the natural log of 60 is equal to uh, the natural log of 16 over three times t. So to get t by itself, we can multiply by the reciprocal of this. So that's gonna give me that t is equal to three times the natural log of 60 divided by the natural log of 16. And again, plug this into your calculator and you would get that the time is about 4.430 hours. So after about 4.430 hours, our 500 bacteria will have grown to the size of 30,000 bacteria. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at another example here. In this example, part B, we're asked, uh, we said it says a particular substance triples in size every hour. So it triples every hour. And then we wanna figure out after four hours, actually it says after four hours, there are 10 units. What was the substance initial size? So we're trying to figure out why not here. So first we need to figure out the value of K so that we can find the initial size. So this first sentence gives us the information that we need. So in one hour, our value triples. So if I started with one unit, then it would be E times K to the first, right? Because the time is gonna be one. And after that one hour, we will have three units. So we can go ahead and try and find the value of K here. So this is saying that e, uh, three is equal to E to the K. So then to get K, we take the natural log of both sides. So K is gonna be the natural log of three. Okay, so now we need to figure the initial size. So let's go ahead and uh, go through this. So we know that after four hours, so we wanna know the initial size. So we have 10 units, um, so we don't know why not. So 10 units is gonna be equal to why not times e to the four for t times the natural log of three, that's our rate of k. And to solve for why not, we would just divide by this piece here. 
So the initial value is going to be 10 divided by e to the 4 times the natural log of 3. And then again, plug this into your calculator. But before we do that, actually, um, we can simplify this a little bit. If you use properties of uh, logs, we know that when you have a number in front of your log that can be treated as a exponent for your argument. So really this is like e to the natural log of 3 to the 4th, which is e to the natural log of 81. And then, so we have 10 over e to the natural log of 81. And remember, when you, anytime you have e to the natural log, we just get the argument as a result. So this is really 10 over 81. So why, our why not is really 10 over 81, but we want to probably get this as like a decimal value. So if you plug this into your calculator, you will see that it's about 0 0.123 units. So we started with about this many units, and then after four hours, it became 10 units, okay? All right, part C. So in part C, we are told that the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years. Uh, years, that should be an S there. And we wanna know how old is the specimen when it contains 40% of its original quality. So it's ending up at 40% here. So the half-life, the half-life. So we know that the half-life is equal to, right? We're told that the half-life is equal to the natural log of two, natural log of two divided by K. So we know the half-life. The half-life is this number 5,730. So if I wanted to find K here, k would be natural log of 2 divided by this. So k is going to be the natural log of 2 divided by 5,730. Now we actually want to keep this as is, but if you were to plug this in your calculator just to get a sense of what that is, um, it's a really small number. It's about uh, 0 0.00012097. So it's very small. Um, now, remember, this value of k in this is a positive number, but when we plug it into the half-life equation, uh, it's y equals y naught times e to the negative k times t for k being positive. So in this case, k is positive. So when we plug it in, it's going to be negative up there. All right. So how old is a specimen when it contains 40% of its original quantity? So let's go ahead and try and calculate this. So the ending value is going to be 40%, which means we started with 1, 100% uh, or a unit, one unit, times e to the negative k. So we're going to do the opposite of this, negative natural log of 2 over 5, 7, 3, 0, all of this uh, times t. And that's what we want to know. We want to know how long does it take for this to happen. So to get t, we can just div uh, take the natural log of both sides. So we will have that, um, yeah, so we'll have the natural log of 0 0.4 equals the natural log of this side, which is just going to give us this, negative natural log of 2 over 5, 7, 3, 0 times t. I get t, to so multiply by the reciprocal of this. So 5730, I'll call it negative 5730, times the natural log of 0 0.4, divided by the natural log of 2 is equal to t. And that tells me then that t is about uh, 7, 5. So if you plug this in your calculator, you'll get 7574. So 7,574 point six four eight years old. So that is how old this would be after when there's 40% of its value remaining. All right, so let's look at one more. Let's look at one more. So I know that there's more on the back of our notes, but what we're going to do is we're going to do some of those problems uh, together in class. So let's go ahead and finish this out with this here. So it says, assume each situation, oh, sorry, that's been the same here. 
So it says 30% of a radioactive substance disappears in 15 years. Find the half-life. So if 30% disappeared in 15 years, that means 70% remains. So there's 70% remaining from the whole. And this is after 15 years. Now we know that we're looking for half-life. Uh, so this is going to be a negative value for k. It's going to be negative k. So we can take the natural log of both sides. So it's going to be the natural log of 0 0.7 equals uh, negative 15k. So then k is going to equal um, natural log of 0 0.7 over negative 15. And that is, oh, what is that? The natural log of 0.7 divided by a negative 15. That gives me a k value of 0. Point, sorry, 0 0.0238, roughly, let's say. Okay, now remember to find the half-life. We are told that the half-life is equal to the natural log of two divided by k. So to find the half-life, we're gonna take the natural log of two and divide by this number here. So natural log of two divided by our half-life. Uh, so we can just plug this into our calculator and we get that the half-life then, so the half-life, is going to be 29.150 years. So that would be the half-life of whatever our substance is.